Fight number 10. We have Tauros. I'm going to be straight up with you all. This is a brain dead easy fight. Steel typing from Metagross plus Psychic makes it resistant to everything. So once again, Metagross is the meta for the fight. Uh, I have brought mine. I attempted a Pharaoh Seed strategy for the previous one. It works pretty well, but Metagross is just better. Uh, there are camera ups as ads. I'm just going to click and pray. Not coordinating with the team at all because, uh, honestly, it's not all that needed. Uh, we, I am linked up this time. This is pretty much just going to be another straightforward solo queue fight. You will probably not have that much trouble. This is probably in like the bottom three in terms of difficulty, I'd say, overall. Tauros does do quite a bit of damage, but because of the prevalence of Metagross in everyone's toolkit, I just think that you'll be able to steamroll pretty easily. Metagross is not going to take all that much damage. Uh, if you're just tuning in, you're not really hip to what's going on there. Metagross can be bought on the GTL for about 10k at level 63 with this move set. It's great. Um, I'm not going to talk too much more about it. You can upgrade it, add Reflect over Scary Face, add Home Claws over Meteor Mash to get your attacks up. Um, that's pretty much going to be the story. I will just Thunder Wave this add because i'm in and see if i take an attack over whatever my teammates are swapping in going straight to the reuniclus um reuniclus also does well for this fight metagross is just a bit better i'd say um you set up defenses faster overall stronger um so i will be getting my metagross in eventually uh, i can talk a little bit about sort of the direction I think the PVM Pokemon are going. You look at this Dusclops from my team member, leader, Drago Tamer. Uh, it's Wisp, Trick Room. Curse just got nerfed. I had it on there for the slacking fight. It did pretty well. Still alive and kicking, unfortunately. I can't get any more value. We're just going to hard swap to Metagross. I'm not that worried because it's resistant to everything. Um, yeah, just the direction that the... The thing, the way that things are going, you like tanky utility Pokemon are useful. Like for this, you could probably hard swap into Dusclops to get a Wisp off if you need to. Might might not make it out alive, but the EV Light does make it very very tanky. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of different things you can do with that. Uh, in in that direction, Haunter is another good example of that. Give it EV Light, it keeps Levitate. Uh, does not have access to Reflect, unfortunately, but gets Wisp. Um, and a few other good moves. Curse as well, I believe. Um, our Uniclus is hurting, which is not good. Hopefully we've got recover on that move set. Regardless, I'm not that worried overall. Um, one thing to keep in mind though, if you are using a setup sweeper, we have, um, Bastidion on the right carries roar. Um, so just reminding my team to take care of that I don't know if this Magnezone will be able to do that, but I'm going to start by Iron Defensing. I think I'm only going to need like one, two Iron Defenses, and then I can start using Cone Claws to get my Hammer Arm damage up and ramped. We do get the, the Recover off on Uniclus with the plus two. It should be doing a lot better there. Um, hopefully someone will be able to reapply this Wisp. I think it's going to be up after this turn. If it's not this turn, the next turn, we get plus two. We are chilling. Um, to round out the rest of the team that I brought, I've, I brought my Reuniclus with Citrus Berries, good backup to leftovers in the um, unique item clause method or uh, unique item clause world that we live in now. Um, so that's, that's a great option for additional health recovery. Um, other moves that give health recovery, like Aqua Ring, Leech Seed got nerfed, but still great for a bit of recovery. And uh, there's a few other healing berries that you might be able to sneak in to give yourself a bit of an HP boost. Recover just got better for that reason, so I'm running Recover now with Citrus, hoping that that would be enough as my backup sweeper here. If it does come in, those two things would be able to keep it up. Uh, we are sitting Trick Room here. I wouldn't say that that's super vital, but if you're coordinating a team, uh, it makes it a little bit better. Tauros is pretty quick, and a lot of the setup sweepers, the Crit Me Not sweepers, are pretty slow to begin with, so. 
moving first is good. Uh, if we did set it up, I don't know if we set it up yet, but typically we do with the uh, the Porygon 2 there. Um, and last, I just have a Ditto Catching Vaporeon so I can get my alt to the Abundant Shrine with Surf and Waterfall. Uh, so this is definitely a wasted slot, but this is an easy fight and shouldn't be causing all that much trouble. So once we get ramped here, Reuniclus should be getting up there. Plus four defense. Had to waste a turn, unfortunately, on the recover uh, just to keep up. Really hoping that we take care of the Bastidian. I don't know what's going on. We're setting... Apparently... <laughs> I, I, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, we'll... <laughs> I'll have to figure that out after we're done recording here, but something's going on. We can I'll I'll pay attention now to see what what's go, actually going on in the fight instead of just discussing it. You need to kill Bastidian. No. Hopefully they read chat. Because I'll reiterate uh Bastidian cover carries that roar, so it'll be a lot of wasted turns if Reuniclus gets roared out. It would be very unfortunate. Uh, I will Hone Claws again. Uh, one good thing about keeping Tauros paralyzed on the ad side, this is a very unthreatening ad, and then additionally it will not suffer, or every paralysis it will not suffer recoil from, I believe it carries takedown. It was doing something with recoil, I feel like. Oh, you know what? That might have been Sand Ship. I don't remember. Uh, all, all things considered, though, it's the least threatening, I think, of the ads that we saw. Bastidian and Camerupt are the ones that you're going to want to watch out for. We haven't even gotten to the 75% mechanic. We, it led with a scary face, dropped our speed. I think everything that we led with didn't take, you know, is, is out of the fight. So definitely lead with a screen setter. Prankster helps. Um, and oh, that's a good point. If you're not using a prankster screen setter, you may not be able to get your screens off. So lead something prankster. If you don't have, let's say, a prankster Murkrow, you have options. You could use something like Cotney and set Tailwind. Um, do anything with prankster just because your speed's going to be super low, or pick something that doesn't or does not really care about drop speed. If you do have a Ferrothorn, maybe just lead with it and leech seed with that. That kind of thing. Uh, make your gyro ball a bit better, taking that minus two. Uh, at seventy five percent, I believe we get hit with a Tail Whip. Um, then at 50%, Tauros bulks up. And then finally, it will attack with a flurry of attacks at 25%. So we did get the Bastidian down, so that's good. Uh, we are not going to lose out on our Uniclus's setup. That would be very unfortunate at this point. Uh, our Uniclus is still at plus four. I uh, haven't been paying. Unfortunate that we get the magnet or we get the uh, camera up on this side for the magnet zone. Uh, that's going to hurt a bit. We're getting calm mind up. I am now at plus two. I will do some science for the people and see what hammer arm does at plus two here. Um, there, I think Tauros is somewhat weak. I can't check my Pokedex being on an alt, but I believe it's somewhat weak in terms of base stats. Um, so we might be able to get away with only plus two, plus three is probably capped or close to capped if it isn't. We do get the move off finally. Magnezone goes down, unfortunately. A little chip from the Rocky Helmet. That's that's some. You can definitely Rocky Helmet's not going to do all that much damage, but in the item clause meta that we're in now, uh, you can sneak a lot more stuff onto things. I don't hate Air Balloon anymore, just to give you immunity to some attacks. Uh, if you've got a typing like Metagross does that makes the AI avoid hitting you directly, then you can probably get away with it because most of the damage you're going to be taking is from AOE attacks like Bulldoze, like Earthquake. Uh, you could immune those and and keep all of that chip off of you for a while. Um, that can give you a bit more longevity. But there are definitely better options, but if you're strapped for a choice, then that's something to consider. Uh, I didn't even see how much. 5.5%. So we got at least one more Hone Claws. 
Um, just because if you know you do a little math, we've got ten hammer arms. If for some reason we had to carry the entire fight, we're not doing enough percent damage. We can probably start chipping it down, assuming that the rest of the team will put some damage in. Uniclus hopefully will start chunking for ten percent as well. I'll, the our Metagross can then just hammer arm the rest of the way. Oh, and we did. I we did lose an attack stage at one point. There may have been an intimidate from the Tor a Tauros coming in or something. Not exactly sure where we lost it from. Porygon goes down. Unfortunately, our carry core though is alive and kicking. We're chilling. Bit of a slow start, and we're getting set up, and we'll finally chunk down the rest of the boss. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, I do have a budget guide that just came out a few hours before this video getting published to putting a team together. So if you're a beginner and you're just getting to the strategy fights, you can go and check those out. Check out that video. Check out the Pokemon I recommend. You can do some pretty effective things with some very cheap Pokemon. I won't spoil, but there's a lot of screen setters. There's some good whispers. Will-O-Wisp is super important for most of these raid fights, especially physical, attacker, physical attackers. We are getting a light screen up, which is an interesting choice. Um, <laughs> I, unfortunate. Um, reflect would be preferable there, but we are stopping the camera up, some of the camera up damage, depending on what it picks. Uh, we are not fully scrolled down. 7.3 on the hammer arm. We're fine with that. I'm just going to spam hammer arm from here on out. Um, hopefully we get a reflect this time. That will mitigate a lot of damage. Though at this point, the fight is basically won. You can kind of see where this is going. If you are lacking in a Metagross, I mean, obviously just buy one for 10k and you'll just beat this, you'll steamroll this fight. Um, if you're lacking in a Metagross or you want to do something you want to do something that's a bit quicker, I'm sure that close combat users will do a bit more damage. Uh, you can choice ban close combat. You can throw a fighting gem on. So if you think that a Pokemon is going to not be all that useful beyond the one move or might not get more than two moves off, fighting gem is good. Then there are the specific fighting type um, damage boosters as well. Uh, for example, the, the direct one is the black belt. And then there are now the, the type plates are tradable in the game. So you can, those are interchangeable, unique items. So the, they function exactly the same. The fist plate, I believe it is, the fighting plate and the black belt are functionally the same, but unique items. So if you really wanted to boost a bunch of fighting type moves, you could go choice band, uh, fighting gem, fist plate, I think it is. We can just check while we're chilling here. Fist plate, yep. Uh, throw a fighting gem, fist plate, black belt, and then metronome is a great option if you're if you know that your Pokemon's gonna stay alive for a while. Um, that's a good option. Like honestly, I could probably get away with metronome on this Metagross, uh, just because it's the AI does not care to attack it, and you could get away with so much. We do want that Bastidian to go away again, and we're getting the earthquake from Metagross, so that's good. Hopefully we're able to. Take care of it. The trick room should be. We're getting stored powers off now. 9.5 just short of damage cap. That's great. Get the work up. That might have been the 50% work up. And then the boss will enrage with the flurry of attacks at 25% is the final mechanic. None of these mechanics are really worth considering uh, or planning all that much around, except for maybe the lead scary face minus two speed. Um, like I said, prankster is going to be important for that. If you don't have a prankster screen setter, then just having something that's a sacrificial swap or something that can set screens and take an attack at the beginning would be good, like a bulky reuniclus, for example. Uh, reuniclus just has so much, so much PVM potential, uh, can do so much. We've got a Volk in. Uh, we never got the Reflect off, which is unfortunate, but again, not all that important. Um, you can see that even Link team members sometimes control you if they so want to. Um, 
I'm just kidding. We really can just totally mess around and win this fight. It's it's that easy. <laughs> it was a valiant effort on behalf of the Volcarona. Honestly, that plus one attack is enough to do a scary amount of damage. Um, it, it just starts chunking, and then once it gets these extra attacks coming up, uh, we might be in a bit of trouble. Except I have six Pokemon alive, so we're probably fine. Uh, if my Metagross does end up going down before the boss is done, I have a few options. I've got Dusclops that I can haze with, depending on whether or not my team uh, has a bunch of stat boosts. So I probably wouldn't, given this Metagross is plus six. I We are getting Reflect back up, which is good. And... I, I'm carrying Glade in the back for the Sacred Sword Choice Band just as a something to click and do a bunch of damage. Hopefully outspeed the boss, though I didn't check speeds at all before this. And then finally my Sableye, which I can burn as well. So It looks like Sableye will make it to give a burn on Tauros, which would pretty much ensure that we get the W here. Let's check our PP real quick. Four hammer arms. My math says this boss goes down in three. That'll do it. Uh, I'm just going to call the video here. This one's over. So um, thank you so much for watching. Check out the video that I made. Um, if you're a beginner looking at what Pokemon you can just pull together quickly for cheap to start getting some of these boss fights done. Uh, then check out the playlist. I have all of the boss fights in a playlist so you can just watch them through. Check out Petrowski's Discord. There are written guides that lay out all of the things that I describe in this video. I don't have time to make these videos and also write them out. Um, I believe Lou Official, the moderator in there, is the one responsible for most of those threads. So he's doing a great job taking care of that. Uh, and yeah, look for teams there. I really recommend avoiding solo queuing, especially as the event goes on. There's still plenty of people that are looking for groups. And other than that, have a great rest of your event and good luck with your Tauros fights. Catch you later.